So then, belief is not the first and primary thing, but belief itself is a result of movement or creating destiny. Destiny is your predetermined past that was encoded in you, that told you no matter what you have to face and what you have to go through, get to 2035. Today's date is September 26, 2017. This is Yalak, and this is another lesson in my series, Anatomy of Change. This lesson is titled, Deliverance and Identity, meaning deliverance is an outflow of identity. Let's begin. Stop, stop, stop trying to find more people to reveal your destiny by telling you what your destiny is. You've done so much of that for so many years, you should have enough to at least get you moving in the right direction. Now, if you want to consult with people as you get going, as you're on your way, that's fine. But in terms of getting started with what you think your destiny is, just stop right now and begin to do something, begin to move toward what your destiny is. You have enough of a backdrop of information so far from all that you have learned to get you started. See, many of us just keep looking year after year, month after month, week after week for someone to tell us what our destiny is. Because we have learned things in reverse. Someone has flipped things and the legs are up in the air and we are using the underside of the table, our bending low, trying to use the table and that's very uncomfortable. So we don't get too far with whatever we're doing with the table. And trying to find your destiny always in someone else's tongue is delaying you from that destiny that you're trying to understand concerning yourself. You got to flip the table back on its legs so you can comfortably have the table to use. I'm saying to you that a lot of things in this life we have learned in reverse because it is conducive to you being stagnated and stalemated in life and making improper choices, etc. And uh, this is something I've learned about myself as the past few years. I have thought about this greatly and it just came to my understanding over the course of time that destiny is something I have to find within myself. It is not your responsibility to tell me about my destiny. Now, you may see something, you may identify something about me, you can speak into it and so on, but it is really not your responsibility to know me internally. I should know myself internally because I am the one living the life. So we were taught backwards. So we have to correct that. Belief is not first and primary. I'll repeat that again because I'm showing you in this lesson how we have been taught backwards. We have been taught errors and grew up thinking that they were the right things. Just like the Bible will say things like they will call good evil, evil good, sweet, sour, stuff like that, and sour, sweet. Belief, we have been taught that it is the most important thing. Believe in yourself. And I'm not telling you don't believe in yourself, but for what I'm trying to cover in this lesson, you have to understand something about belief. That belief is not the first and primary thing when you're dealing with destiny. But belief is a result of movement or creating destiny. So that in order for belief to 
become the fuel that keeps you going because you believe certain things strongly about yourself and what you will yet accomplish, you must begin to do something first. And as you get going on the way of accomplishing and putting together the things you are doing and you are shaping them up nicely, you can then begin to believe something about yourself and what you are doing. So you begin to do something, you begin to move towards your destiny, even if you don't know it's your destiny to do this or that particular thing. And along the way, as you're shaping and you're making that sculpture look nice and so on, for example, along the way, you learn to believe that you can complete it, that you can get it shaped the nice way that you want it so that it looks appealing and you know whatever it is that you're doing. So we find that belief is not necessarily the first thing because you can do things that you or start things that you did not believe in or believe about yourself. You can even help someone do something that you did not believe they could accomplish. You didn't believe it was going to turn out to anything. But because, let's say, they're your friend or uh, they're you know, they're your child and so on, and you always thought something different of your child or your friend, um, that they should go a different direction, but they felt something strong and they wanted to go that way. So you decided to help them. You might give them, let's say, your physical assistance, put some time into their project, whatever, and then it started to turn out very well and it looks like it's got a lot of promise in it. And eventually it turns out to work out well for them and then they find their way in life. You might also benefit from it in the future or you'll just say, okay, my time is finished. They'll thank you for your assistance and you'll wish them well. And you know at that point they're going to do well because they've already begun to do well and it's only going to grow. But at first you did not believe that it was a good move that they were doing and that they would succeed. But you still wanted to support that child or that friend. But when it turns out to be well, then you realize that your belief about them was not grounded in anything that would turn out to be the truth. But after you see that it starts to work out, you're so thankful that your time is not wasted and that their time is not wasted as well and their efforts and so on is not wasted. So now you begin to be a believer in what they are doing, which you're helping them with. See, the anatomy of change is telling you that belief is not necessary to begin. So if you grew up in a family that had difficult challenges, let's say economically, money-wise, you just don't have it. And there might even have been some really big um, sickness in your household and you have to care for another child or a parent that's really seriously incapacitated by this uh, medical condition. It causes more strain on you. You ended up, because of maybe poverty that you were raised in, to not get the best education and whatever little course you're trying to do, um, you've got to stop it real early in order to go run and get a job to help your maybe a parent um, that's that's not well or some other person in your house. And so it's, it throws you off a lot when you're trying to accomplish something. And then maybe the neighborhood you grew up in, the conditions around there and in some cases maybe violence or whatever, it's just not, the whole thing is just not conducive to what people would normally see as, you know, fostering growth. And, uh, you know, you get what I'm trying to say. So because of all of those conditions, you might be predisposed to not believing things easily about where you're going in life, what you're going to accomplish and so on. You don't have the kind of faith and trust in systems and in other people and even in what you are doing sometimes because you know life in general is stacked against you. You can't accomplish what the person beside you is accomplishing, what your friends have done, where they're going. They're going off to their nice university. They're getting all the degrees behind their name. You can't. Life has given you something different. And it's a struggle. And so belief, it seems, is not given to you. 
But how is it that people who were in that kind of situation as well, just like yourself, could end up in a lot of cases achieving some things that make the world turn and look at them? And then they help to better other people's lives later on when they themselves did not have much reason to believe from the start. So if they did not have much reason to believe and didn't believe something that they were doing, but they were just going along with the process, if I'm breathing, I must work. If I'm breathing, I must try. So they just went on to doing something and then it worked out. But they did not believe. They did not have belief at the start because of how life was stacked against them. But somewhere along the way, they were diligent enough with what they were doing until it started to work out. And then they began to believe something about themselves. Hmm, if I continue this, it might actually work out. And I can add this to it and build this on top of it and offer this other service along with it and so on. And I can reach a lot of people with this and whatever. And I can get lots of customers from this while helping to better people's lives, so on. But they didn't believe at first, but belief came later on. Why? Because they were doing something and out of that doing toward a destiny, which they did not know they had before, but they were simply moving toward that destiny in an, might I say, un intelligible or unknowable kind of uh, way they didn't know it was something that was going to be part of what they're here to do but they moved towards it and then believed in the middle that means belief is not necessary at the start and even knowledge of your destiny is not necessary at the start either those can come later on. Belief and knowledge of what you're supposed to do can come later on. The important thing to understand in this lesson is that you must begin to do something. It's better if you do the thing that you're really here for, but if you're not sure, it's better to try something. Get up and do something. Begin to move. So the first thing is not to be concerned primarily about belief, but about getting something done. And this is how you're going to change your life. As this series is titled Anatomy of Change, you're going to move into changes in your life, no matter what's stacked against you, because you begin to do something. Remember the story of Joseph, how Joseph was sold by his brothers, ended up in prison he was a slave but then he rose in the prison to doing things that other prisoners around him weren't doing so he was rising to the top so he was in the top in his dream that ended up getting him in this situation he was at the top in his dream he was at the top in his mind of where he th according to where he thought he would end up by what his dream told him and it began to show itself even when he went down in this life and was a slave and was in a prison, that upness in his thought and that upness in his dream still saw him rise and get up in the prison above some others who were probably there before him. And he began to be the go-to man in the prison and in Egypt for dream interpretation. And divining, because the Bible says he was divining. So you've got all the other diviners that were in all their professional um, cults or movements or religions in a place like Egypt that was so strong for all of that religious kind of uh, stuff. Yet he, not being accomplished in that way professionally, rose to be the sought out diviner that stood out above the other paid professional diviners who already had the blessing of the king, the pharaoh. And notice that he ended up getting his dream because he moved in the area that was inside of him waiting for expression. The dream interpreting, don't you know such a man as I can divine? 
So he is basically now taking on the task to to seek the Most High for the interpretation of this or that particular dream. So he begins to do something. He could not see clearly his way out of prison, his way out of his predicament, and his way into the dream. He just knew he got that dream that the Most High was going to elevate him. Um, but here is a challenging situation in his life where he went downhill. And so he did not have uh, he did not have full belief that he wanted to say, "I know I'm getting out of this place next month." But with that lack of belief that would not give him uh, show him the way to get out, he just did something. He said, "I can interpret that dream," and he moved to doing something that was in him. You've got to do the thing that is within you, even when you don't have much reason to believe, when you don't have the friends around you, when you're cut off from family, from your children, from the kind of job that you wish you had, from everything. You have to do the thing that is within you, even if you don't have reason to believe or people to direct you. The direction is inside of your very heart. So then, belief is not the first and primary thing, but belief itself is a result of movement or creating destiny. So then, belief is not the first and primary thing, but belief itself is a result of movement or creating destiny. Consider that, you know, I thought this morning, a warrior does not first need to believe he is a warrior, like Hollywood movies make you think, I need someone to teach me how to do this, how to express this, how to bring out the force and whatever, and I need someone to whatever. Uh, a warrior doesn't tap into that belief first, because he needs all the the training and the people around him to support him and to tell him, yeah, 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 you can do it and so on. You know, when you are faced out in the wild with a wild animal, you don't need people to sit and school you for a couple hours how to deal with that animal that's right in front of you. You've got to try to escape on the moment without knowledge of how to escape such an animal. Should I be still for this animal and he will eventually just move on? Or do I make sounds that will make him run? Or do I fight or climb up the tree for this? You can't go through all of that. Right there in that moment, you're going to make your decision based on you, whatever is going through your mind. And you might decide to fight back. So so in that case now, when you look at a, a warrior, he doesn't need someone first like in the movies to try to put all these things in him right away. If his village is attacked repeatedly and he jumps in to join the fight, eventually he learns to fight, survive in battle, and becomes the warrior he never had faith to be. He did not believe all along that he was a warrior or he would have been in the army all along instead of being some blacksmith or some mother doing something else. He didn't believe that. If he believed he was good at fighting, he would have joined the army long time ago or been some bodyguard around the king or security personnel. He didn't believe that about himself. But Repeated attacks on his village brings it out as he joins in the fight to save his people and to save his village. So without faith, he became a warrior by faithlessly expressing that fight which was on the inside of him. Then his destiny becomes expressed. The passionate and well-timed expression of creator-like capacity to move through and past obstacles in your life, make evident the warrior in you which reveals the path that connects to your destiny. Destiny, then, is not simply to be seen as a, a predetermined future, like the dictionary might tell you something about a predetermined future. But rather, destiny should be seen as a predetermined past. See, anatomy of change tells you you need to change your mind in order to move into the changes in your life. So when you change your mind, you begin to move toward your destiny. 
and it brings eventually your deliverance. And then you find out that you didn't just move into your destiny and the changes in your life by simply praying, praying, praying and just believing, but you did something. You moved toward your destiny. You moved toward a certain point from where you are right now. And that moving towards it is the expression or builds the expression of your destiny. That was predetermined and not a predetermined future, but rather a predetermined past that was encoded in you. Destiny is not something you are going to find out about later when you get there. Destiny is encoded in you in the past when you were created by the Most High, and you are just moving forward and learning how to express that which was put in you and predetermined in the past. Rewrite the dictionary. So deliverance and identity. Is saying that deliverance is an outflow of identity. When you begin to learn your identity and express it, even before you can fully express it, you express it in smaller ways as you learn how to express it, that learning to express your identity brings your deliverance or the change that you need in your life. So that deliverance flows out of the expression of identity. When you become who you should be in this life, changes happen in your life or the deliverance you seek comes into your life and flows over into the lives of other people around you. So destiny is a predetermined past that was built into you. Just like I think it was Job that said, he performs the thing that is appointed for me. Well, those things were, you know, I used to think when I was younger that that's something about the future. No, it's something about the past. That's why in Jeremiah 6, 16, the most I says, connect with your fathers of the past. Stand in the ways, the old paths and see, right? And other scriptures say stuff like, ask the fathers of the past. Why? It's something about your past that you need to connect with. In order to go toward your future, you must look in the past. In order for Israel to find out who they are and what their future is about, they must connect with something in the past. It was already built in you. So if he performs the thing that is appointed for me, he's just looking on the calendar to see the thing that was appointed and written down in the past for you. It was something that was predetermined in the past and built into you for you to express and by so doing move into the reality and the fullness of it so that other people can see it. Because you can see it if you look carefully. That's why you'll be in front of the mirror and you'll rehearse certain things and you'll do whatever privately. Because it's already expressed to you. You can express it in yourself. You've got all kinds of thoughts thinking about what you're going to do and what you're going to build and how you're going to be and so on. Why? Because it's already encoded inside of you. The future lives inside of you. It's just that people on the outside can't see it yet because you're not taking the steps to, to do something, to get it out in the open. So that which is bottled inside of you, it's always there. And notice it's always fresh. It is as strong today as it was 10 years ago. But if you don't express it, it keeps rising to the top. It keeps just like, you know, every time you pop the bottle open, it, it fizzes out, it sprays out real strong and you feel it driving you crazy in your mind and you're just spending a lot of time with it privately. But nobody knows it because you're not expressing it publicly. But it keeps coming out of you strong, strong, strong in the privacy of your own home or wherever you are because it remains fresh and vibrant and full of life. Life is inside of you waiting to be expressed. Your future is your life right now. With all of its misunderstandings and complications, your future is your life right now. It is powered by the life you have right now that you think is going nowhere. You are going somewhere right now that your future will show was a design by the Creator. 
And when you finally learn to express it and you get there to that point, you will learn if you were not at that place in 2017, you could not be at this other place in 2025, in 2035. Because 2017 determines what 2035 will be. You just don't know how to think about it right now. It's in your mind. It has been encoded right there. Destiny is your predetermined past that was encoded in you, that told you no matter what you have to face and what you have to go through, get to 2035. And when you get there, it will work out. Anatomy of change. So in the past, the capacity for future was built into you from the start and this is why you have feelings and dreams. Because dreams come from the multitude of business, as per what the scripture says. So, the idea is that if you're doing a lot of stuff, certain kinds of stuff in the day, whatever your regular routine is, you likely dream about it sometimes. So, the stuff that is in you, because it's your regular experiences... It's just all in you and you'll dream about it. You'll dream about family members or friends or your job or a car or whatever because uh, or situations that you're dealing with because it's just stuff you're dealing with in your life. So dreams come from the multitude right, of stuff that's inside of you. Now, since the future is already encoded in you and you just have to learn to express it, then the business of the future has been set in you from the start. And you must look into your past to identify the feelings and dreams and things you were drawn to in your life. To identify talents and habits that reveal your strengths in this life. And move according to how those talents and dreams drive you to exercise them. That's why I said you don't need any more people trying to tell you what your gift and your calling is. It's in you right now. Look back in your life and see what made you come alive when you did it. What people complimented you on. What people talked about. What made you feel. But you must also balance that with a little, you know, common sense. Because some people might get off on just doing something for someone else and you run yourself dry and it depletes you. No, the things you want to look for in your past are the things that made you come alive when you were doing it. It blessed, it helped, it touched someone else, brought benefit to someone else, but it did not necessarily leave you depleted all the time. Sometimes it might have depleted you a little bit, but it does not, it did not leave you depleted all the time where you cannot rebound quickly or where you cannot move on. It did not bring you in a place where you are just destroyed all the time. And when you're through with that season, you've got nothing left and it takes you years to figure out what to do next. No, don't look for those ones. Look for the ones that left you feeling as high and as strong as the other people it touched and it blessed. And you've still got the strength and the fight to move on and to keep your journey and fueled you with even further growth. Saying, I want to do this again. I want to keep doing this some more. But something in your past that you were doing that helped someone else, if it keeps depleting you, you're going to say, I don't want to do this anymore. I mean, it's nice for them. It's whatever, but it, it takes too much out of me. I can't. No, 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 no. You want to look for the things that touches somebody else, but touches you as well and makes you grow as a result of it also. So that when you give, the more you give, it's supposed to make you grow. Too many people are giving, 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 and they don't have anything else left when they're done. They've given all. But right giving, creator-led giving, does not leave you depleted. You get more. Like you picture the whole thing with Elijah going down to the widow woman at Zarephath. And, uh, you know, after she gave and made the cake and so on, she had more left to make her own food for her and her son many days after that. That's the kind of creator-led stuff I'm talking about. Where internally your life is not sucked out of you by what you're giving to people. Because people realize you can do something well or you can, you know, they'll just keep using you, using you, using you because it's easy, it's simple and you are such a giver. They'll just run you dry and they don't care when it's done and over with. They just, they don't even know who you are and what your name is. Because you allowed them to use you you weren't being creator-led. 
Destiny then is uh, expressed with the Hebrew word sum, which means to ordain, as in First Chronicles chapter seventeen and verse nine, and it says also, "I will ordain a place for my people Israel, and will plant them, and they shall dwell in their place, and shall be moved no more." Neither shall the children of wickedness waste them any more as at the beginning. When you look at this word, ordain, it means, that's the word sum, it means to put, place, set, or appoint. Like I said before, it's it, destiny is a, not a predetermined future like the dictionary will tell you if you look online, but it's rather a predetermined past. If it's pre, then it has to be from the past. But you express it in the future. So people get a little bit confused by the definitions and, and misunderstand things and think it's something I will do when I get there or when somebody helps me. No, it's when I realize now who I am and what I'm about and what is inside of me and I express it now that other people will get it later in the future. I'm already getting it now because I already had it all along. I already had the stuff in me. It's just that in the future, people will realize that it was for them as well, that you were gifted for them as well. So this word here, ordain, again, means to set, ordain, establish. See that establishing, why? Because it was something established or set in you from the past. To appoint, constitute, make, determine. So he is determining your future from the time you were made. He set it in place to plant, to fix, to make, to transform into and to fashion. So if, if he has put your calling in you in this life, whatever it is, then he from the start has, you, you see, you are not with destiny. You are trying to become something that you are not. And that's why people are looking for people to tell them who they are. And when the person gets it wrong, prophesying to them, then you feel like, oh, I got to become something else. You don't have to become something else that you are not. You just need to express what you already are. So destiny now is saying from the scriptures that you are ordained a certain way. So he has set and fixed you to be a certain way from the start. So he has transformed you into the thing that you will learn to express later on. So you will not become the notable business person later on. You will just express the business person that's smart, that's already in you, because the mold when it was being made to form you was transformed from just flat surface or flat dirt or whatever, um, or just a bareness of spirit. It was transformed into something that was just meant for you. So you were transformed or made into the likeness of it from the very start. You will only learn to express it. That's why the Most High said, you know, looking at Israel, he says, you are gods, but you're going to die like men. Why? Because you already said already, um, basically, you are called by my name and you can't be called by my name if you are not me. Now, I have to get philosophical to talk about that, which I won't do here. So I'll deal with that in some other lesson because, you know, just to make sure you understand where I'm coming from. But the scripture also says he made man in his image, male and female created he them. So if you are made into the image of the creator, then you are already made to be something. You will only learn to express that which you are already. Because the creator is not without expression. So the expression was already transformed or made into you. It was transformed into the man, the male and the female. You are going to learn how to express that transformation that became a man, that became a woman, that became a male, that became a female, that was ordained in you from the very beginning. It is about a predetermined past and not a predetermined future. The determination is of the past, but the expression is future. Because there's no way as a newborn infant that you're going to express all that was put in you and ordained from the start. No, you're just an infant. But the stuff is in you and you will walk with it for years through all kinds of turbulence and situations in life. But you must learn how to express it. And that comes primarily not by belief, but by doing something 
That's why the Most High said sometimes in the scriptures, observe to do all. You notice like the New Testament is big on faith, 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 believing. You'll find belief, yeah, in the Old Testament. But it's more concerned, the Most High is more concerned with you doing the thing that he has commanded. Observe it so you know it and you, you understand what it's saying and then you do it. Because doing gets you to express the thing that you have studied, that you have learned, that you have inside of you. So observe to do and then you will express that which you are already made as. And so when Israel was not expressing the Israel that it was made to be different from the other nations, he said, okay, they're not expressing the thing that's inside of them, so they aren't living as what I made them to be anymore. They've become something else. They're now heathen to me, so he kicked them out. But notice he's made a promise to bring Israel back. Why? Because if the stuff is in you, it has to be expressed. That's why the wicked continue to be wicked because they are estranged from the womb. So they just live it out. The stuff is in them. So they just find a way to bring it out. The, the verse again says, And I will ordain a place for my people Israel. See that? From the start. And will plant them and they shall dwell in their place. And they were already dwelling there. That's why they could get kicked out because they were already dwelling. It was something that was already Ordained, it was set from in the past. Ordained then from the Hebrew means to set in place from the start, to a point. So you will live based on what was set in place beforehand and it directs you into the future. The stuff that you are going to use to express is inside of you. Nobody needs to give it to you. They're telling you all these years, believe in yourself, believe in yourself. And it's not that believing in yourself does not work. Because it's good if you do. The problem is some of us cannot get the changes we need in this life. Because not all of us can figure out how to believe. See, belief is something where I can tell you about it. I can tell you that you should believe. But I cannot make you believe. And so if for whatever reason, based on how your life has gone, you cannot learn how to believe certain things, especially when it comes to things about yourself, because sometimes there's some things that we deal with so deep and so internal, like an internal struggle, a tornado inside that does not allow you to access the proper things about yourself. To pull on that inner strength. Because 2035 is waiting. You cannot simply sit around for another 15 years trying to figure out how to believe something about yourself that will help you to get to 2035. You have to just bypass the belief that is not working right now and begin to do something. And that doing of the thing that you are engaged in will jumpstart your belief Kick in your belief into proper gear when it when it gives you access to it. It will show you a route to get to, a different way to get to your belief, which will be further fuel for what you are doing. Doing things will connect you with that inner part of you that you can't access right now. It will change your life. It will change your mind. People will say, is that the same person? Of course it is. I just started to do something one day that I thought I should never do because I didn't have enough belief. I didn't have enough training in that area. I didn't have enough support. Even inventions of certain things are made by people who never saw anyone made that particular thing before. No one invented this or that before, but somebody got up and did it. Some inventions came about not because someone believed this particular thing could be made. They were probably just doing something else, tinkering with something else and realized, wait, if I do this, something else can come out of it. Then all of a sudden, yeah, something else came out of it. And now it's a big thing worldwide. So they did not believe at first to make that particular thing, but it just flowed out of them. So by starting to do something, they created something they didn't even believe or think about at first. You're creating A and you ended up making B, C, and D. The struggles you go through that you cannot change are in part designed by the Creator to get you to become the person you should be. So there is really no obstacle in life that can prevent you from becoming. And you see... 
people people misunderstand becoming. I'm looking at something else now in the scriptures as as I've been thinking the past few weeks. That sometimes we misunderstand blessing and change in the scriptures. We think that if we do something and we step out that if I don't get the full blessing right now in my life, that I didn't accomplish anything. I didn't accomplish it. No, that's not how the scriptures teach. That's that's the fake teachings of the scriptures that we've been given, especially by a lot of prosperity teachers, who themselves meant well. But as people begin to connect with the Most High more and begin to look at things another way, they begin to see certain things and things get more revealed and dropped in the earth. Things that people knew from ancient times. So if you're working at something, you may not necessarily see all of the blessing, but it does not mean you are a failure. Look at it. The blessings of Abraham, Abraham didn't see all of it in his life. But it's for his descendants and their descendants and their descendants and it goes on like that. So did Abraham fail and did the Most High not keep his word? No. We're still waiting for the Most High to restore us to the land and so on and give us the fullness of the blessings. So Abraham never failed because he did not get all of what the Most High said to him. The blessing and the change is a deposit. And sometimes, depending on how where life takes you and what the Most High wants, sometimes the, the changes happen in your life fully or partially. The blessings come into your life fully or partially. Sometimes you'll get a more fuller amount of the blessing. Other times you're just starting something for the blessing to come into your family line, into your house. And then when you are gone, your children benefit from it or they build it up some more. And then their children benefit from it. So the blessing is like multi-generational and not just for you alone right here, right now. So you're not failing because you got just like 15 more years to live and you're a little bit older now. You can't pull it off. No, the starting of the stuff to begin to express the stuff is the change that you need to be concerned about change yourself change your life by beginning to express that which is in you and leave the further rest of uh, expression of it to those who will come after you whose lives you have begun to direct by beginning to express it in your life the anatomy of change deliverance is the outflow of destiny. Deliverance and change is the outflow, the outworking of the expression of the identity that you have begun to see about yourself. And that destiny and change flows over to your children and their children after you and flows over to other people in your life as well around you. So that deliverance is an outflow of you realizing your identity, realizing something that's already built inside of you. And so once Abraham um, started to see that based on this word from the Mosai that something has been deposited in me, he began to journey and move because the Mosai was leading him. He see that he did something and the process of change or blessing began. Notice that you cannot get to the point you want to get to if life is too easy. The inner power is what takes you to the place where you can decide for yourself, this will be the expression of my destiny, of what was encoded inside of me. And you learn through difficulties to express the thing. You're like, oh, one more trouble I got to go through, one more problem I got to go through. The capabilities that you will need to handle, to swing that sword, in a masterful and skillful way the tactics you need to employ cannot come into your life if life is too easy you're going through more things than some of the people around you some of your friends are more blessed than you but that which you will execute on this earth but that which you will execute on this earth you will not be able to do it when you get to that point when you should do it 
if you did not learn certain skills and how to exercise certain things inside of you, if you did not go through certain other problems in your life that would teach you how to call on that inner strength and the inner recesses of what the Most High placed in you for that time when you're looking to use it. It gets built into you by the things you go through. You ever watch movies where uh, some people are chasing someone else and this person, they're trying to capture the person and the person, let's say the person didn't do anything, but they thought they did, they stole something or whatever, um, or they thought they killed someone, but they didn't. And they're like, Hey, I didn't do anything. I didn't. Now, now the person that's being accused starts to run because they know these people are going to kill me. I got to find a way to prove that I didn't do it because I didn't do it. They know the only way to escape is to run. But people keep being sent out to them every time they send new people because if they spot the other old people that chased them last time, they keep sending some new people that they won't identify quickly. So if they're walking by them because they don't know these are new people sent, they, they, they don't have their guards up so they'll walk right by them and then they'll grab them. But if they send the older people that chase them that they already saw, they would just stay far. But as they begin to chase again now, this person runs, runs, runs. They go in this apartment building. They jump from here, there, jump from one building to the next and whatever. And the people chasing them just stop at the edge of the building, for example. And they can't do it. Why? They're not used to doing it. But at the time where it became necessary for them to make it through that point in their life, and not have their life end by the people coming after them to capture them. Their, their, their ability to make that jump carefully comes out of the many other troubles that they had when they had to run from the others. And so now by this time, they are used to jumping that distance. They know how um, quick to jump, how, how strong to jump off, where to place their foot, how to land and to land properly so that they can still get up again and run immediately as opposed to just somebody who will just jump and can't get up because the shock is running through their foot, their ankle, everything, their whole body. They got to stay down there uh, until the people catch up to them. So the past troubles help them to learn how to escape in the future and to get moving even further until they can prove whatever they're trying to prove. So the things that you go through that are difficult in your life will bring into your life all that you need to accomplish your task on this earth when you get there. Nothing you go through is a waste. Nothing you go through will fall away. You will use it. You will need it. You are going to benefit from it and many people will benefit from it. Doesn't sound like the kind of word you want to hear. But it's the only way to your future, which is the expression of what has been placed inside of you. Because that future is something you have already lived. All the places you're going to stand, all the things you're going to do, you've rehearsed them privately to yourself for years. You felt it just like, you know, like surging in you all along because, yeah, I know I, I can do this, I can do this. You've already lived it. For you, it's not, it's not future for 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 you to know something about yourself future in that sense is just for people to, to to see and witness the expression of it so they can benefit from what was the past that you connected with all along in your heart other people may take advantage of your struggle and the difficulties in your life and even make things harder by trying to block your path. Making life harder for you and uh, may even deceive you. Because they are dispensers of evil. So the creator uses all. And he uses them to exude evil. Because that is the level to which they have chosen to develop themselves. So sometimes people are just going to take advantage of you just because they know you're going through a downtime and they can do it. You see, that person is not changed by the Torah. That person, they're like a low-level soul, a low-quality soul. And they sit there and devise ways to come at you. But keep steady, keep moving, do your thing, never back down, never waver, do it on your worst day. 
But of course, take a break every now and then, kick back and relax and rejuvenate and enjoy. So you're, you're learning to balance yourself as well. Isaiah chapter 54, verse 7 to 8. For a small moment have I forsaken thee, but with great mercies will I gather thee. In a little wrath I hid my face from thee for a moment, but with everlasting kindness will I have mercy on thee, saith the Most High, thy Redeemer. So this is talking about Israel's downtime. But the Mosai is like, in the future, there's going to be everlasting kindness coming to you. But when he hid his face, other people who are evil to Israel decided to take advantage. Just like I was saying before, people are going to take advantage when you're at a weak moment in life, an unguarded moment in life, or things just went wrong or something like that. Sometimes things that go wrong... It's just trying to get you to take another bridge or teaching you to build this bridge or teaching you to get yourself across the water any way, even if there is no working functional bridge. Because life is like that, where you need, when you start to express your destiny and you move into the fullness of it, you will know sometimes how to move through places where there are no bridges because the bridges have not been built at that place yet or have been broken down but because struggles in your past made you have to encounter places where you needed to cross where the bridge was broken down you now know that this will not stop you from expressing your destiny your identity because you've had to deal with broken bridges in the past and you made through them anyway because you never stopped expressing that which was on the inside of you. So faith then comes from doing things and you learn what faith is. Faith is doing the thing that seems like it cannot be done. That's what faith is. He was a man of faith. Yeah, because he did something that other people said can't be done. Or he did something that seemed was too difficult, but he got it done anyway. He worked hard at it. Faith is doing. But they taught us faith is about believing, sitting on both your hands, under your, your thighs, praying and waiting, rocking back and forth in the chair, wondering if God's going to, if God's going to, if God's going to. Most is wondering if you're not going to. Move into your destiny by expressing your destiny right now not in 2035 right now expressing it right now not waiting until you can fully express it expressing it in small ways today right now begin because you are not becoming something you already are it's like bees don't just sit around waiting for people to just make up a beehive for them or waiting for a bear to make a, a beehive for them oh, okay they said the bear and uh, whatever else out there that eats the honey wants the honey so the bear is going to just come by and take a few hours every day and make up uh, the honeycomb uh, and the hive and so on for for the bee to deposit the stuff inside of it the honey bear is not going to do that so if the bear is not going to do it the bees will have no place to drop the honey. But if they want to drop honey, secrete it, they got to make the stuff for it. So don't be waiting around for somebody who's going to benefit from what you do to come and make your future, to make your... No, you already are. Just begin to get your job done. Make some movement now. And you make the movement by expressing who you are. Regardless of what they say. People always try to bottle you down, push you back, tell you you can't do it like that, you can't say it like that, you can't whatever. There are no rules in this life except be you. You are the image. In the image of the Most High made he them male and female. Express the image. And you notice when the image was dropped right there in Genesis chapter 1, in a time when the creator was doing all kinds of creation, it's telling you that your image is about creating things in this life. Create 
the opportunities to express yourself. Create it. Do it right where you are and you don't need a dollar to begin to express it. Zechariah chapter 1 and verse 15. And I am very sore displeased with the heathen that are at ease. For I was but a little displeased and they helped forward the affliction. So here again, people are taking advantage of Israel's downtime. The Mosiah is angry with them, but he's like, I, I was only a little displeased. Now, a little, you know, relative to what he could do. He could just wipe out Israel altogether. So by keeping Israel alive and only scattering them and putting them in some hardship, he's just a little displeased. At least he's scattering them all over the earth that he created anyway. But the heathen now took advantage of that and decided we're just going to slaughter them. We're going to give them the worst that we can give them. We're going to hold them down, subjugate them. We're going to drown all their dreams and teach them things backwards. Like I opened up this lesson saying we've been taught the wrong things about destiny and about belief and about yeah destiny. We've just been taught the wrong things. But the most High saying, I was just a little. So people are going to take advantage of the little things that you go through. And that's why sometimes some of us feel things are greater than they are. Of course, some things are greater in your life. But there are a lot of things that we go through that are not as great as some of the bigger things we'll go through. But we treat the smaller problems as if they are as big as the big ones. You need to change your life. Change your mind change the way you think sometimes things should just be looked at in a different way to see that they may just be smaller than and that way you can release your creativity release your expression because when you feel that everything is so big it squashes your expression you don't want to do anything towards your your goals because everything is too much of a weight for me to carry. But if certain things are small, you can have some relief and learn to express yourself and then tackle the bigger ones when the time comes, when you'll be even more prepared because destiny has moved you to the place where you've built up enough strength to take on the giant. Notice David didn't take on the giant before he fought the bear and the lion. Or when he was just a very small child. But as he grew and he learned to fight. And he learned to take on the bear and the lion and so on. As he grew and he learned to use his weapon. His sling. And, and as he learned to, to wield it. To swing it. To get the proper aim. Which took years. As he learned to be. Um, to, to express that fighter in him with only a sling. Then becoming powerful with a simple, small, basic type of weapon that a child can make. A slingshot. As he began to be expert as that he could take down something much bigger. If you begin now to express what is in you. You will move past the greater obstacles in your life that prevent you from what you think your future should be about. You got to start today. So sometimes uncertainty is where you are led. But this is where faith is found out. It's in your time of uncertainty when you still learn to express. And you learn that nothing should stop me from expressing what is inside of me. Book of Habakkuk. Chapter 1, verse 1 to 3. It says, The burden which Habakkuk the prophet did see, O Most High, how long shall I cry, and thou wilt not hear? Even cry out unto thee of violence, and thou wilt not save. Why dost thou show me iniquity, and cause me to behold grievance? For spoiling and violence are before me. And there are that raise up strife and contention. If you struggle with understanding faith and think you have doubt, you can't pray it away. You must move forward in order to move away from it. Doubt indicates you are faced with walking a path 
you don't know about. That uncertainty is just uncertain to you because you never had to deal with it before. But how can you say your destiny will let you move into certain changes in life, certain things, and you don't want to go down uncertain paths? Oh, uncertain paths, uncertain times in life. Oh, God has cursed me. You wanted greatness. You wanted uncertain things that no one else in your family was ever certain about because they've never themselves gone down that path or been into that era of life. So obviously, if it's going to be something new that you are going to bring in, it's got to be uncertain because you've never walked the path before. Uncertainty is not necessarily a curse. It's just a way for you to express something different that the next person beside you may not be able to express because it was not given to them. Uncertain, but still expressing. Unsure, but still moving. Haven't figured it out fully as yet, but I'm already doing it. And so here Habakkuk, he's got all these questions for the Most High. He can't figure out, especially being a prophet. He's wondering why the Most High don't respond and so on. But that does not stop him from being a prophet and from continuing to feed the children of Israel. In spite of what is uncertain in his own life, in spite of what he does not understand, what he does not know, he does not allow that to rob him of anything. He still moves forward. You and I have to do the same. So it is not necessary to be delivered first in order to find your identity. Because as I started out saying, deliverance is an outflow of identity. So you don't have to be delivered first. But expressing your identity and who you are brings the change and the deliverance that you desire, that you pray about, that you twiddle your thumbs over. You should, however, use all your efforts to become your identity or to express it, and deliverance comes out of that. Let's look here at Zephaniah 2, verse 1. Gather yourselves together, yea, gather together, O nation not desired. Verse 2, before the decree bring forth, before the day pass as the shaft, before the fierce anger of the Most High come upon you, before the day of the Most High's anger come upon you, seek ye the Most High, all ye meek of the earth, and so on. But he starts out telling you to gather together. Because if Israel is going to gather together, in other words, they're going to return now with one heart toward the Most High, they are reconnecting with their identity. Why? Because the Most High knows, as the Torah is showing, that your deliverance and your blessing and your change comes out of your identity. So finding and reconnecting with your identity, Israel, brings the deliverance that Israel is seeking. But instead we're sitting down cursing the white man, cursing the southern man, cursing the African man, cursing the Chinese man, cursing everybody. When the scriptures is just teaching you that if you gather together, if you come back to your identity, your deliverance comes from that. And you don't have to walk around be cursing and fighting with everybody and being afraid of them. Because your identity actually relinquishes your fear. It, it dies down. It kills down your fear. When you are not walking according to your identity, you become more afraid in this life. People come up against you all the time. You're trembling. You don't want to do anything anymore because you can't, whatever. But your identity, when you're moving in it, it kills your fear. It puts it under your feet. That's why great people stand up and do a great thing in this life because they are moving in what they feel driven to do in this life. They have found their identity. They have connected with it. And like someone said, I can't remember who said it, but something like um, when you are walking in the shoes you are made to walk, you will become fearless. So the most I says, gather yourselves together. In other words, become knowledgeable of who you are do something about that identity that has been placed inside of you become you again become yourself reconnect with it because your identity leads to your deliverance 
So it is not necessary to be delivered first to become something and to become what you want in this life. It's not necessary to get the change first, although that certainly would help make it easier in some ways. But you can become what you are by expressing it. But you can express what you are and that expression of identity brings your deliverance. But when you don't express what is inside of you, that's when you're going to be squashed by those around you and by the situations. Because everything in this life is going to press you down, beat against you, back you up against the wall, pressing you into the wall, so to speak, and just like squeezing the life out of you. But when, and you don't have the power to resist, but when you begin to express your identity, and in the image of the Most High made he the male and female, that image of creativity, that image that can sustain, that image that will give new life to, that image that will work out problems. When you begin to express yourself, you find the strength, the power to raise up yourself, push yourself off that wall. And the haters can't do a thing but watch you and wonder, this God must be real because he inspires some people to move on in spite of. So you have to decide in the middle of your trouble who you really are and what you will express because you will not only become that, you are already that, as I've said before, as you cannot express the future of who you dream to become if you are not already that. You can't express anything you are not. Can you be a father if you are not a father? You can say, hey, could you go to cool to somebody else's baby, but you cannot do that to your, uh, and express being a father to your own child if you never had a child. You can exp only express who and what you have been designed or ordained to be, predetermined to be. Let's look at Isaiah chapter 52. And verse 1 to 3. Similar to Zephaniah 2 verse 1 I just read. But it says here, Awake, awake. Put on thy strength, O Zion. Put on thy beautiful garments, O Jerusalem, the holy city. For henceforth there shall no more come into thee the uncircumcised and the unclean. Shake thyself from the dust. Arise and sit down, O Jerusalem. Loose thyself from the bands of thy neck. O captive daughter of Zion, for thus saith the Most High, ye have sold yourselves for naught, and ye shall be redeemed without money. You see the Torah principles coming out there that you'll find in other places in the scriptures? You'll be redeemed without money. I told you you don't need a dollar to begin your expression. So he's saying to you, if you're going to be redeemed without money, you're going to be redeemed in a way that you didn't normally think, that people don't normally think. It's going to work out in some other kind of way. So he says now, um, shake yourself. You know, put on your beautiful garments. If you're coming up out of the dust, why are you going to, you don't feel like putting on beautiful garments if you're in the dust. So he says, shake yourself. So he's saying, get it off of me. Get that dust, you know, clean up yourself. Get dressed again. Put on your beautiful garments. In other words, change your mind from being low down in the dust under the earth and put on some beautiful garments. Change your mind. Become the very expression of that which is in you. Shake yourself from the dust and arise. Loose the bands from off your neck, O captive daughter. He's telling you to loose it. He's not telling you that your enemy is going to lose it right there. He's saying you got to do it. Why? Because it's in your mind. You've got to change you by what is in your mind. You've got to think some new thoughts and begin to do something about your identity. You're going to change your identity by thinking I should get up, shake myself off the dust, take the stuff off my neck and put on some beautiful garments. It will beautify you, strengthen you, make you become what you should be. So you then have to express what is in you due to an inner voice of the Most High that speaks to you. So if you don't express, destiny may never work for you. 
It never builds things for you, but expressing it will find things get built into your life. When you're moving according to what you are built to be, things are going to shape up. They're just going to come. It's just going to happen. You don't know where it's coming from. You don't know how it's going to be done. It's just going to happen. This is creator done. It is creator orchestrated. It is creator put together. He just wants you to begin to express, begin to do, begin to be. And he will build the stuff around you and in your life. So then becoming begets deliverance. When you become who you should become, deliverance is born. You might be walking around with it still in your stomach, but deliverance is born. It might not be the fullness of what you expect yet, because you're still carrying, but deliverance has started to happen. So break out of the mold that you were taught to be in to serve God and live your life. Break out of that. Stop pleasing everyone else and do what you know inside of you that you need to do. Joseph didn't say in the prison, um, okay, well, maybe I, I, I interpreted your dream for you, Baker and Butler, but the king now, you want me to interpret for the Pharaoh? The Pharaoh will take my head if I, if I can't answer him or if I give him the wrong thing. Joseph didn't approach it like that. Because if he was thinking of it like that, then he's trying to please the king primarily. And if he thinks that he cannot please the king because, oh, I'm not used to living in Egypt. Maybe they think different around here. The G might mean something different right here in Egypt. So my symbols might not quite work and whatever. Then he's only trying to please, please the creator. But no, he's pleasing. Sorry, he's trying to please the, the Pharaoh. But he is pleasing what is inside of him. He's pleasing the creator by pleasing himself. How does he please himself? By exercising the gift that is within him to divine, to interpret the dream. He knows he's good at it inside of him. He has practiced it all along, all these years. That's why he could tell that the dream was from the Most High. Right? When he interpreted it for his family that he's going to be set up above them and she's bowing down to him and the sun and the moon and so on. He could already interpret the dream for himself in his own house, in on his own bed because he's already been practicing the stuff internally. Remember I told you throughout this recording, you have already been expressing the stuff inside of you and living it inside of you. You just need to now express it outside so other people can see it and benefit from it. So Joseph wasn't trying to please the king He's just doing what he has always done to please himself. He has always interpreted stuff for his own self. And it always brought him, you know, internal benefit where he could grow with the gift inside of him. But the most I was going to let him grow externally later on when the sheaves are seen to bow down to him. So right here now, when the Pharaoh has a dream, because he's not a people pleaser trying to concern with pleasing the Pharaoh, then he doesn't have need for fear. See, if he is trying to please the Pharaoh, he might feel, oh, the Pharaoh, I can't stand in his presence and do that, or I might get it wrong. And that might cause him to doubt and give the wrong interpretation or just be blocked up, stopped up in his mind and can't interpret. So he's not trying to live by fear because and pleasing people because that stops up his creativity. His ingenuity stops his essence from flowing. But instead of trying to be a people pleaser and please the Pharaoh and not to disappoint those who are bringing the message to him that the Pharaoh wants to see him, instead he's going to please himself. I love utilizing my gift. I do it with myself on my bed all the time. I love doing this. That's why I offer to, ex to, to interpret for the baker because I love interpreting. That's why I offered to do this for the butler because I love my gift. Internally, I love it. I've been exercising and practicing it all along. I'm just going to do this for the Pharaoh now. Not because it's the Pharaoh, but because I just love it. If somebody else had asked me, I would have done it because I proved that by just doing it for the baker and the butler. So his love for his gift made him express the gift for the Pharaoh because he was centering on his self, on himself, his own gift. He was practicing it and doing it all over again. So he wasn't trying to please the Pharaoh. Stop trying to please people and do it your way. 
Do it the way that you feel it and sense it in your heart when nobody is looking. When you're washing the dishes and that's how you feel it, that's how you think about it. Go out and do it the same way because that is where your creativity and your power comes from. When you're not trying to please somebody else, but you're going to do it your way. Stop trying to please your pastor. Stop trying to please your more, your camp leader. Stop trying to please your boss. Stop trying to please everybody else. Please yourself for once in your life. Do something for you and become you and express the image of the Most High. For in the image of the Most High created he them. Express that image that has given you a gift to express in this life. Now we move on. Change is really to reject sameness. Start doing something different. If, you, if you're sitting there waiting for someone to tell you what your gift is and so on, start doing something different. Because all you've been doing, if it hasn't shown you yet, you got to try something else and see if your gift might come out in another area. So reject sameness. Reject being a clone of what others are and what you have always been. Let's run over to 1 Kings chapter 8. And verse 47. Yea, if they shall bethink themselves in the land whither they were carried captives, and repent and make supplication unto thee in the land of them that carried them captives, saying, We have sinned and have done perversely, we have committed wickedness, and so return unto thee with all their heart, and so on and so forth. So basically he's saying, if they bethink themselves in the land where they are captives, and Israel is going to find a, a deliverance eventually. Because they're changing how they think. They don't think like the heathen anymore. They don't think and do things the way the heathen or the captors want, want them to do. Their captors want them to do anymore. They bethink themselves. They start to think differently now. Going back to what was. So they're shaking off the thinking of those around them. Because it doesn't work anymore. It doesn't make me free. That just keeps me bound. I got to do me. I got to do Israel now. I got to resurrect something from the past that was built in, like I said from the start, because your destiny is already inside of you. It is not a predetermined future. It is a predetermined past that was ordained or built in. It was formed into you. So when you bethink yourself now and you go back to what you used to think and feel like years ago, before the onslaught came into your life, before the, the orchestrated trouble came in from people who blocked your path when you go back to being you when you used to feel when you used to be alive when you used to think to win when you used to think you could succeed when you used to think that you could get it done if you go back to that you're going to find the way when you approach it like that you understand i may be in a storm but if I change myself to become what I dream, not what I learn from somebody who's telling me what my calling and gift is in this life, because sometimes people are going to try to be honest with you and tell you something that they see. Other times people are going to tell you something about your future because that's how they want you to serve them. And you will always remain that because you aren't being you, you are being what they want you to be. So I may be in a storm. But if I change myself to become what I dream, I will express so much of what I dream that I will become what is in my mind. So Proverbs 23 verse 7 says, As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. So as you have dreams, that's what you will become. What you think on the inside, you're going to be led to express it. Always taking direction from somebody else is just going to have you express their dreams. You got to dream for yourself and express your dreams. Express your own identity. Stop being a clone of everybody else around you. Does that mean you never help or assist other people with their dreams or with whatever program they've got going and so on? But in the midst of it all, you must still be you. You must find yourself or lose yourself. Lose yourself to someone's dream when you should be finding creativity and release and expression according to the dream that's in your heart. For Job said, he seals instructions in you in the night time. Something is inside of you that's been placed there by the creator. You got to find out what it is and begin to do something to express it or your change will never come. When you become your identity, Become who you are. Destiny flows out of that. Because destiny is going to bring your deliverance. 
You then have to work on something in your life, increase your knowledge, learn something more or new, figure out ways to express what is within you as who you should be has already been placed in your mind and your deliverance is, it, it, it's, it's, you know, it's right inside of you. It's right inside of you. And it's, it's based on how you think of yourself. So the fear tactics that people use to taunt you and periodic um, checking on you to make sure that they that they're always scare you or that you psychologically have them on your mind, you know, because they doubt you, uh, whatever. No, they're just afraid of you and what you will accomplish. But having you think of them every now and then is just having you uh, fall under the witchcraft and the spell that they're doing by just surfacing every now and then so that you remember them and then it makes you be afraid again and it just it, it clouds up your creativity and so on. Ignore all those people and do what's inside of you to do don't trust other people trust yourself don't believe others because they may be deceivers believe yourself you've heard it all along the other way i'm telling you give a little belief to your own self give a little belief to your own dreams quit working on somebody else's dreams all the time work for you you are the enterprise of the most high that's why the most high looks at israel and he thinks israel is my all israel is the portion of the most high so what does he do? He works at his own portion. He might have to send them into captivity for a while, but he's still planning on doing something about them to bring them back into the land. Why? Because he's going to get his portion. He's working at his dreams, so to speak. You should work at yours too. And if it falls down and your life enters into some kind of captivity for whatever, relational captivity with somebody or whatever, if I can put it that way, or financial captivity, if I can put it that way again, work at who you are. And you're going to move past all those things, no matter how difficult it might be, no matter how hard or how long. The important thing in this life is not to be rich, is not to be anything that they've told you. It is to be the person the Most High made you to be. The payback to the Creator to say thanks for sharing life with me your life with me, is to become what he intended for you to be. When the Most High sees that, that's going to release your creativity and the blessing in your life. So you then have to become all that you need to be. Don't try to limit yourself. Think anything. Break the bars. You have no limits to what you can do. So you are the pastor. You are the camp leader. You are the more. You are the Hebrew teacher. You are the language expert. You are the business person. You are all that you need to be. You are your own driver on route to creating the destiny expression that you need. And you cannot be stopped if this is how you approach it. And some of the people hating on you, they're going to look at you and wonder and admire the work of the Most High in you. They might still hate you, some might change, but some will stay the same way hating you because they know this is the leading of the Most High in this person's life. You just got to think all the time. No matter what stops me, what blocks me, what hinders me, I will break out. I can't be conformed into anything else apart from what I am. I'm not going to be inhibited I refuse to be restrained by the millennia-long accepted interpretations of who or what God is. I'm just going to be me. You wouldn't even be going through what you're going through if you were not supposed to break out. The Most High is not going to just put you into stuff that you just can't get out and be you. What's the payoff for him creating a world like that? You are created to be free, to express. But sadly, so many of us remain confused and stagnated by religious thought from the Bible and from so many teachings out there that have nothing to do with the Creator. But sadly, so many of us remain confused and stagnated by religious thought from the Bible and from so many teachings out there that have nothing to do with the Creator. Some people teach the Scriptures because they don't even know how it should be taught and you believe it is true 
you've got to find the most high for yourself. But I hope this is a real, it just frees or brings up that challenge inside of you to take a look at your own life, to realizing that you've got in you what it takes and to understand that deliverance is not necessary first for you to express your identity, but that deliverance is simply to be seen in a different way. You see, you got to restate things in your life. If it doesn't work for you, forget what the dictionary says. Forget what anything says. If it does not work for you, you got to change it because you must live. Just keep in mind that it is not first necessary to be delivered to express who you are. Say, when things get better, I can be me again. No. Identity brings change. Your deliverance is an outflow of expressed identity.